Thank you everybody for joining us today. This is going to be our 3D Solutions Spotlight for SOLIDWORKS Technical Communications Suite. And today we're going to specialize on Composer. And then uh, next Friday we'll do inspection and model-based definitions. And the Friday after that we'll do our new product, Visualize. So Visualize is not technically released yet. It's a standalone rendering tool for photorealistic renderings. And I'm talking like photorealism as as much as that uh, that word sounds, uh, it's it's it looks like a photo, basically those renderings there. So um, that will be the this webinar series. So it's a three-part series, and uh, today is the composer portion of it. We'll go ahead and talk about the other um, products as well that are in the SolidWorks uh, technical communication suite. Just so everybody knows kind of the family here and what products are available and kind of what each one does. And so of course uh, my name is Scott Woods and this is hosted by Hawkridge Systems and uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So first off uh, just to chat real quick about these four products. So what do they do? Kind of their main use and every product of course has multiple uses but each one of these has a main use. And so SolidWorks Composer, we have assembly and operational procedures. Um, so like instructions, that can be a PDF, that can be a video, that can be interactive content with the player, which we'll show all that today. That's kind of what we're, what's, what we're focusing on today. Uh, next week, we're going to do inspection and model-based definitions. Um, we're just going to put both those uh, together there. That way, because uh, they, they are, uh, we can go eat over each one pretty quickly. So um, what inspection is, is your first article inspection uh, report software. So basically, it takes your SOLIDWORKS drawings, or really any drawings that doesn't have to be SOLIDWORKS, just as long as it's a PDF, and it analyzes it, uh, balloons the drawing, creates, generates the inspection report, that's your Excel sheet that you're then inspecting to. Um, and that's the report for that. The model-based definitions is a, typically it's a PDF, it can also be an e-drawings file that it outputs, and um, and in the, at the end of the day, it, it gives you a 3D model with all of the drawing data, all your PMI information from your SOLIDWORKS drawing, right in a 3D format. And so really the idea here is to try to go paperless, to try to go drawingless. So on the shop floor you could have these PDFs that are 3D PDFs, you know, your computer's on the shop floor, and uh, you open it up and that's your rotatable model with all the information that would typically be on the drawing, and said it's here. So it's if you guys want to go in that direction. Um, and then we have Visualize, which is calling it the Hollywood quality photorealism, photorealism rendering. Um, and that's going to be included with uh, any seat of uh, SOLIDWORKS Professional and SOLIDWORKS Premium, but not the Visualize Pro features, which we'll be talking today. And so the standard version of uh, Visualize comes with those two seats of SOLIDWORKS. And uh, for every seat of SOLIDWORKS, you'll also have a license of Visualize that will actually run uh, separate, so it's a standalone installation, and uh, you can put that on any machine. It doesn't have to be the same machine that SolidWorks is running on, and it can run at the same time as SolidWorks, so it doesn't actually take up that license. But today, we're really going to be focusing on the Pro features, uh, which is an additional purchase to upgrade from standard to Pro. But uh, we'll kind of call that out as we see it, and I'll briefly talk about that today, and we'll be focusing on that on the fifth of next month. Okay, so here is the family. So it all comes from SolidWorks. So they're all SolidWorks products. We've got SolidWorks in the middle there, and then these are the suite of products. Now there is some crossover between the products, which I'll briefly talk about, but really each product has its definite use, which we'll, we'll define on each of the webinar days here. Okay, so for Composer, which is what we're talking about today, what is it for? Well, it's for technical rendering, and so you look at these images up here at the top, and these are the typical uses for Composer. We have line art, or more of a technical illustration, or even, even rendering, and it's a very technical style of rendering. And so we can take this, we can save it as images, we can you know, put this into a PDF, we can uh, create a video or the player, and really it's just a way of publishing out multiple uses for Composer, uh, which what we want to talk about today. So really we bring in the CAD file into Composer, and then we can publish out all these different things, but it's always been separate, right? Where we said, okay, well we're going to do videos, or we're going to do this PDF, or we're going to do this or that. Uh, really do it all and then combine it together at the end because I would like to see everybody using Composer to its fullest capability and actually 
taking all these publications, combining them together into a single publication that really is this like life, life uh, style of the product. So you have this interface where you see the rendering of the product, you click on something, there's your installation instructions, there's your assembly instructions, there's maybe a video of it, that's your marketing content, or even like your inspection data and stuff there. So we'll get to that at the end, um, kind of combining all that together and uh, creating a package for Composer. Okay, so uh, with that said, a technical documentation, we can save that directly as a PDF or in the player. And then um, for interactive publications, we have the 3D player. Then also these vectorized parts list, which I'll show an example of. Um, basically, it's a 2D line art that you can click on and navigate through the model. All right, so this is what we're focusing on today. Just a quick highlight of the other products we're we'll focusing on over the next couple weeks is inspection. And uh, so what inspection does is it can bring a PDF or TIFF file of the drawing. It can also, it also works directly in SOLIDWORKS. So it's, a, it's an add-in to SOLIDWORKS, but it's also a standalone installation. So when you purchase the software, you get both. And you can just use it however you see fit. Um, OSR, OCR from any CAD file. Uh, so that could be directly from SOLIDWORKS or as a PDF. And what OCR is is optical character recognition. And that's the way you can take a PDF, draw a little box around a dimension or a text, and it will tell you exactly what that says. Even though it's an image, it calculates that and that we don't have to do any typing. So it's really handy for these reports. Um, and then it's all industry compliant, um, so you don't have to worry about that. And also there is template editors, uh, which are also industry compliant, but then you can edit them to put your own spin on things uh, to really customize these reports for your internal structure. Okay, so model-based definitions, we're calling it 3D Anywhere. So it's uh, you know, a 3D PDF, which is of course viewable by Acrobat uh, reader, and then um, there's also many 3D PDF readers for the, your, your cell phones and tablets. Uh, then also the eDrawings um, function is, is there as well. So uh, eDrawings works on mobile devices and it can actually view the models from model-based definitions that has all of the PMI data in it. PMI data is all the data that comes from your drawing. So that's going to be your dimensions, GD&T, notes, annotations, things like that bring it in and uh, view it right in 3D. So it allows you to go drawing list and paperless, basically eliminating the need to print things, eliminating the need to actually develop these high-end, these technical um, drawings, which is really nice if you can get away from that. So that's what model-based definition is designed to do, and we'll be talking about that next week. And then we have visualize, kind of the, the fun, this is the fun one, new on the market, or will be new on the market next month. And it's, it works outside of SOLIDWORKS. It's not an add-in into SOLIDWORKS, but you do get a license of the standard with SOLIDWORKS Pro and Premium. Uh, the, uh, the Visualize Pro is an additional purchase upgrade on top of that, but the Pro features gives you true photorealism. It has all of these very unique rendering options. Uh, you can bring in a SOLIDWORKS model and render all the configurations at once. You can have multiple cameras and do simultaneous rendering of that. You can que uh, queue the rendering, so you could have like a machine on the back corner and you have all these renderings stacked up, tell it to start, you know, leave for the week and come back and have all these renderings ready for you. We do, uh, it also does like, um, uh, sun study rendering, so you could have a product, you put it out, and you can specify a location on the, on the planet, and it will calculate where the sun is going to shine and shadows, and it just looks really nice, and it's it's for marketing purposes, and we'll talk about that uh, not next Friday, but the Friday after it'll be the fifth of uh, next month. Okay, so let's jump into Composer. So here is Composer, and um, I think, looking at the list of attendees here, I know a lot of you have attended our uh, webinars in the back, or in the past, and so uh, some of this might be a little bit of recap for you, but I want to put a little different spin on this presentation and really gear it toward not really development of the content, but what do you do after you develop the content? We have a ton of, of, of webinars uh, that we've done in the past, and we've recorded all of them, so if you go to our website and go under Tutorials, for Composer, you just go main website, Tutorials Composer, you can pull up 
a ton of those uh, webinars, and a lot of those go over like how to create step-by-step -step procedures, how to create animations, how to create marketing images. Um, I'll touch on that here, but I want to focus on publishing those out and then combining them together. So looking real briefly at this document I have in Composer, you'll see that I have a page is for table of content. It's not finished, it's not filled out. I'll go ahead and do that on the fly here. Thumbing through the other steps of the process, we have our build materials, and then we have this guy kind of explored it out with some annotations, and then it goes into creating an assembly procedure for each one of these uh, steps. And you'll notice how this is actually set up here is I have a image in the background. It's just a JPEG image I pulled off, off of Google Images. And uh, each one of these views I have set up as a page. So I can take this and I can print it right out of Composer. I can save it in the, in the, uh, as an EXE for the, um, the player publication. And uh, you can play that on anybody. You can send that to anybody that can play it and they can print it from there as well. Um, but additional to this, we have a lot of the interactive capabilities because when you go from page to page, or even if you skip pages like that, it's going to go ahead and it's going to animate from one point to the next, which you don't have in a PDF. When you have in a PDF, you just have page, 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 you print it, you have these images, and sometimes when you're assembling something, you might go from point A to point B and be like, well, what changed? You know, with Composer, we have these lines and arrows and annotations and text and all sorts of stuff to tell you what happened, but really, the power comes in when you're using the player, you know, put a, put a, computer on the shop floor for assembly and we have this movement all of a sudden it opens up a whole new realm of you know capability of what we can do because we see it moving we see it assembling and if we want to take a cl closer look we can easily rotate it take a look at different sections by double clicking one of these steps here it goes right back or it goes on to the next or it goes right back to where you were so it's not like you have to worry about messing anything up we can play all this content in the free player that comes with Composer, and uh, with that player, uh, you can install it on every machine in your, in your, in your facility. It doesn't take a, a license or anything like that, and, so, um, and you can't edit anything. So you view it, but you can't mess it up, which is nice. Okay, so let's thumb through these guys. Kind of focus down here at the bottom. So I have a marketing image. And I also have um, just kind of a plain image here. And th this is what you get, uh, so a plain rendering basically. This is what you get when you first import the models into Composer. When you import it from SolidWorks or whatever CAD tool you're importing from, um, you know, it's, it's pretty plain. There's not any like environmental effects. The rendering isn't there. Things aren't shiny. It comes in like this. And then you kind of tweak it and, and do what you want done to it and explode it apart and create that structure. And that's what we'll be focusing on there. Um, before doing so, I'd like to show some examples. So this is um, uh, just a set of examples. And this is a little kind of delivery system that I put together real quick. All this is is an image. And the image has hotspots on the image. So what you can do in Composer is you can import an image. You can have hot locations. So where you click on it and something happens. And we'll be showing that here in just a few minutes, how we actually set that up in Composer. And so having these locations, when you click on with the mouse, they do something. And you can create kind of an interface like this. So let's say I have this rendering and I click on this guy here. I can see a better rendering of this model. And so this was done in Composer. Um, perhaps you did this in Visualize and had this real photorealistic rendering. Um, you can still link to that image or that rendering from Composer, even though it wasn't made in Composer. So it allows you to kind of group everything together and develop these, we're calling them publications or deliverables. Basically, um, for your end customer use would be a website they would go to. They would click on your product and have all these options of things that they can check out. For internal purposes, um, kind of the same structure, but it'd be more of like uh, the assembly procedure or maybe you know so, some kind of operation that needs to be done, maintenance or something like that. More internal things compared to what you want to show your customer, you can set it up both ways. All right, so with that, I click on the next one. This is a vectorized uh, rendering. When, and if it's vector, that means it's all mathematical lines. It's not like an image. There's not, uh, it's, it's not pixelated. So I'm able to go through and I'm able to select items. Again, these, these hotspot locations that are set up in Composer, which we'll show. And uh, if I mouse over, 
they highlight green, the materials highlight green. If I click on a subassembly, it kind of, it explodes. I can isolate these components and really create a nice clean parts list. And all this is done in Composer. Keep clicking this button here, brings me back to the previous step and brings me back home. Okay, uh, next one is our PDF. And so this is exactly how you see it here is exactly how you would see it in Composer. So every page, every view in Composer is a page in this PDF. And the only reason why you would want to save it as a PDF at that point is probably so when it leaves the company or if you just want to archive it or, or send it down to the shop or something like that because the PDF is so widely used. But basically in Composer you can set it up exactly how you want and then you just save as a PDF and then you can do whatever you want with the PDF. However, if you leave it in Composer and don't convert it to a PDF, if a PDF format isn't a requirement, especially for internal purposes, that's what I want to kind of base the rest of this presentation around because we have so many more options. If we don't save it as a PDF, we leave it in Composer, use the player in Composer to then view that. You can do that internally or externally, and then we can add a whole lot more life to it, more interaction. Okay, but keep in mind, PDF is totally possible. It's not a problem at all. Um, video, animation, this probably isn't real smooth over the go-to meeting. Uh, it's probably pretty choppy, but uh, keep in mind, it, it's nice and smooth on my end. It's a rendering done in Composer, um, rendering animation done in Composer. And the whole point of showing this is, let's say that you had this operation or this assembly procedure or something you really wanted to show as a video. You could develop that in Composer save it as a video, which I actually have um, on my computer here for this model that we're working on. And, uh, and then in our final publication, we can link to it. And so I can have this, this kind of deliverable that says, hey, you know, there are some real specific steps here um, that are highly detailed. Click here to watch a video. They click there, they watch the video, and like, oh, okay, I know how to do it. And then they move on from there. And then the EXE, that loads the player for Composer. Really no reason to show that right now because it does the exact same thing as we see it in the software itself. We just don't have write access, um, just read access, so we can't actually modify anything. So really the same thing. Okay, so with that said, let's take a look at a couple things that already have been done. Uh, one is the animation for this quadcopter. And uh, the reason why I have the video already saved out is because it would take four or five minutes to then push the video out of Composer with a timed webinar like this. We kind of have to speed things along. But if you check it out, this is what's going on. We got this uh, full assembly animation that's put together. If you check it out in Composer, it is right here. I'm going to just rewind it, and you'll see the exact animation is here. Same, same exact thing, but this is interactive. So this is if we stay within the software, not save it as a video. But really, you could, you could have the best of both worlds. Have it in Composer, also has it, have it as a video, and it works. Okay, so um, with that said, let's go back to, back to this guy here, and let's start setting up a few things. So first off, we got... Uh, the table of content that I would like to link to a couple pages within this document that already exists. And then also I have uh, this marketing image that I'll render out, link that to the table of content, and that'll be an external pull that it's actually pulling an image from probably the network that you have set up. Uh, or if it's on a website, it would just be in that same folder that the, that the website's located in for the customer to visit. And then uh, for this plane, we'll do a couple uh, assembly procedures on that. So. With that said, let's jump to the marketing image. And uh, I want to recreate what you're seeing here. So here's the, the plain one that comes from SolidWorks. So how this is done in Composer, it's pretty simple. You specify your parts, what you want the environment to, to be, like the environmental effect on the components. And if I go here, um, if I say like metal or plastic or something like that, that's typically how I start these. I'll select all the components and I'll say, hey, these are metal. Now I'll kind of put a shimmer in all the components. And if they're too shiny or not shiny enough, or you want something chrome, then you go in and make modifications, individual components on those um, to the individual components. The reason why I select everything, because I don't really know what I'm going to do later with this. And I don't want to at one point 
explode something apart, zoom in, and some things real plain and, and boring. And I was like, oh, I should apply the material to that. So if you apply it at the beginning, then you don't have to worry about that. And then you can come in here and say, well, you know, this should be plastic. Something like that. Uh, it's way too plasticky. Let's go back to, to metal. Um, maybe this base here, maybe I didn't want it to be as shiny as it is, or maybe it's going to be a uh, aluminum part, and then I could change it to aluminum, you know, things like that. And it's just environmental effects on the model. I probably also want to put a ground in here. Even though this is a quadcopter and we might have it flying, let's have it so it's actually docked in the ground. And that's a control G on the keyboard, and uh, that displays the ground. In the collaboration tab, we have the ground available, and then we can apply any changes we want to this guy. Um, I actually like how it come, came in by default there. But uh, say I wanted a mirror, this thing was going to be flying over water or something. Um, I could have that, which... Let's go, I, th I think it's because I don't have no background on, but then we have our shadow, something like that. And we can really control that. We could also take that ground and move it, so have it flying or have it ducked. Now, the rendering uh, lighting by default is set to what's well, called high contrast, and a lot of the, the advanced stuff is just turned off by default. We just want to go ahead and toggle that on and kind of do a little bit of adjusting to get this good marketing image. So if I go high contrast and maybe do like a metal with three lights, I kind of default to this one. I really like it. And static lighting, that's going to uh, put the lighting in the environment instead of attached to the camera, which it is by default. The per pixel lighting just kind of tightens everything up, so it's going to render per pixel instead of the global rendering. We do a shadow. Oop, looks like I already checked an accident there, but that's off, that's on, so we just have shadows. Uh, ambient inclusion is fun. Uh, it's, it's not real realistic, but it does make things look nice, except especially for a technical animation or rendering that we're doing now. Uh, basically, it takes areas that are occluded by light, like inside corners, and darkens them. And then we have control over what that radius is and intensity there. We can really make things look nice and sharp, basically, with that. Okay, I'm happy with how things are looking, so I'm going to go ahead and update my view. And then perhaps let's put a background image in here. So if we go to, let me navigate where my uh, where my images are kept here. Oh, sorry about that. I just had a little brain fart. There we go. So there's there's images. So if you go on Google Images and type in HDRI, you can pull in uh, environmental images. The real high quality ones cost about ten bucks. But you can get a bunch of free ones like this one here. Uh, these ones are also free. But basically, you take these, you can import it into your model, and then as environment, set it as environment, and then we can put this guy actually in like an actual environment. And he's docked there inside like a something like that. So and this is all just for marketing image purposes. And that's HDRI, is that file format. So once I'm happy with that, I'll go and update the view, and then I want to save it as an image so I can link it to my, my table of content there. So I go to Workshops, High Resolution Image. Let's go ahead and set this to, we'll, we'll turn it up, 3600 by like 900 DPI. I want a real high quality image. I like to show too by really turning up the quality, uh, but then showing how quickly it still renders out. And then we'll go ahead and put this in the publication folder here. So that is done. I, it was that quick. I said okay before I could even show where it was, it actually finished rendering. So now when I go to my folder where I put that, there is the image. You'll see it's high quality. It could be higher quality. We could jack that up even further. But I mean for this purpose, it, it looks pretty pretty good. Okay, so that is the image that we'll use as our marketing image. So if I go back to the table of content here, maybe when I have this in a player, I want to say, you know what, I want to see the marketing image. I want a button that I click and it opens up that image. So to do that, um, I could do it many ways. I could add like a text or even if you click on the model or maybe this button here or anything, and I could have it open up the image. But we might as well make this look, you know, kind of legit, right? So we want to do a 2D image. I'm going to go ahead and decide where this guy is pointing. So it's basically, it's, it's just the texture of the image. I'm going to pull in the image I just made. I'm going to hold, hold down shift to kind of resize that and something like that. So I'm going to 
put in a, a text and we'll call this uh, oops marketing image oops sorry about that I'm not sure what is going on here I must have got outside the text field there we go that's just small let me go ahead and increase the size there something like that I'll delete that one okay so we got our marketing image and so if anybody clicks on that it's going to open up that image and I'll go ahead and just update my view now for the table of content maybe I wanted to jump to different steps of the procedure here's step one if I hold down control and drag that into here, it creates a button and automatically it links this button to the view that I just pulled in. Um, let's go ahead and go, you know, step four. So maybe step one and step four we wanted to bring in here. And then I'll update the view. So right now this table of content, I want to link to a marketing image and then I want to link to a couple steps of the actual assembly procedure. So I'm going to say step one, step four, going to close those workshops. Also you see if I kind of try to line these up, I'm just eyeing it in. I have a tool called the magnetic line tool where I can take, I can attach to the images and then I can move something like that to make sure that they are lined up. Once you're done with the magnetic line you can just delete it. Okay so these are automatically attached to the assembly steps but this marketing image is not automatically attached to that marketing image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it then I'm going to come down I want to then link that to that image, so it's just going to open up that file and update the view. And then to test this, and we're not done here, but we just kind of test as we go along, there's actually a player mode in Composer. So there's the design button down here. If I turn that off, it acts like I now have the Composer player open, not Composer program. And so by clicking in the marketing image, I can then load that marketing image. By clicking on any of these steps, I could then jump to that step of the procedure, something like that. And if we really wanted to create like an, an interactive environment, I would go here to this step and I would have something that would bring me back to the table of content. So then I could grab that table of content and I could put it maybe down here, something like that, just as an example. And I would update that view there. So now we're in the table of content we click on step one, it goes here, click here, it brings me back. And then I probably want annot annotations here, or labels here, this is, oh, this is step one, this is step four, or whatever that is. Okay, so that's how we start linking things together. Maybe we wanted to link uh, this to the actual PDF document that we exported. And if I go to my publications folder, I have one right here. And this is the composer document saved as a PDF. And if I thumb through the PDF, you can see all the steps of the process. So maybe I wanted to link that to this document too. So I would want something, some kind of button uh, to say that. And let's go ahead and do it. We'll do a string here and I don't know. Um, we'll say open PDF instruction. And we could have that as text, we could put an image in here. Really, all we have to have is something that we can select. It can even be a blank text, sort of like my last example where it was parts of the, the image. It's actually text there, the text is just blank, you can't see it, so when you click on it, there's something there to activate to jump into that next, next page. And so, if I want to do that, I would simply click here, I go to link, I would then link that to my PDF, and update. And then to test it, of course, we select it, make sure that it actually opens up that PDF. And you'll see how I'm doing this here. It's actually pretty simple stuff. You basically have all your content in Composer that you've set up, all your steps of the process, your marketing images, any PDFs you want to send out, any animations, which we'll do here in a second, and, uh, and then you link it all together, and you can link it all together right in Composer like this, and you have a couple choices after it's in, in a view like that. You can view it in the player, or I can also save this as an SVG file and the links are going to retain. And that SVG file, I can open up my browser like we did with the example, click on these items and the links are still going to work and that's going to navigate to any of these external items that we're linking to. So really, really powerful stuff. Okay, so for the video, um, if I go here, here's my video and there's the 
animation, right? I've already shown this, but basically there's there's my video that I want to link to. Any text that's in Composer, you can copy and paste it so by Control C, Control V, and then maybe here I'll say open um, video instruction, something like that. And this would be the exact same thing how I linked up the PDF, uh, but I would be of course linking this to a different file, which would be that video. And I would update it. And again, to test it, just because it's always good to test things, click on it, make sure it actually plays that video. Okay, so, so far we kind of have this guy put together pretty well. Now let's do uh, take this one step further and actually pull out segments from the animation. But pull out segments from the animation that we technically don't want to save it as a video. And keep in mind this would be assuming that the end result here would be played in the composer player. And how we do that is we want to jump to animation mode, which is right here. Show that timeline. We'll see all these markers up here. I'm just going to clear that out there. That's just markers that were brought in from the from the views. Now this looks like a mess, but you don't even have to worry about it because all you're doing is you're visually looking at the screen and finding these locations that we want. And so here here's a good one. So we have these bolts coming down. I think they're spacers actually. Yeah, these spacers here. And maybe we want an animation of applying these spacers. So I would navigate to that section of animation. I, I would click right up there and I'd call this anything I want. I've always defaulted to start a one and a one. That way I can kind of look at my marker areas and I know that that segment of animation is what I'm going to be linking to. So there's the start of my segment and then perhaps, here's a good spot to, we'll end it here. I don't know, it just uh, doesn't really matter, just uh, pick, a, pick a spot to kind of start the animation and end the animation. So the point of this is that in Composer, you don't have multiple timelines. You have a single timeline for your project. But what you can do is you can bring in multiple models. You can have actually, uh, during that same timeline, you can have multiple different animations going on. And all you need to do is you need to say from five seconds to eight seconds, or from 30 seconds to you know three minutes, uh, that segment of time is its own animation. You define that by markers, and using that, we can render out as a video, we can render it out as a series of images, or we can just simply link to it using the table of content here. So with this, here's the PDF, here's the video, um, and then perhaps this would be like, I don't know, animation segment, something like that. Um, it's kind of a generic thing. I probably take an image of the animation so it's more visual, but you get the point. It's just it's just something to select. So with that active, we're going to go ahead and link that. And this time, we're going to link it to an in internal property that's called player marker play marker sequence. And I just choose the first marker, and it will play from the first marker to the second to the to the next marker. And I could have any as many markers as I want in that animation timeline choose any marker and it's going to play to the second. So something like that. So we'll say start 01 and update that assembly or update that assembly, update that view. And then when I click on it, you'll see it'll actually jump into the animation. It will play that segment animation that I want to show. So this is really useful if there's a part of an the animation that's really difficult. So a lot of times in the steps, you can say here step one, step two, step three, and it's very apparent what you're trying to show in this assembly procedure. But all of a sudden you get to something that, you know, maybe um, there's something you have to unscrew, you know, uh, three times and then navigate it a certain way out of the out of the bay or something. I don't know. You have to like turn it to, to a certain angle. That might be hard to show in a procedural format, but if you show that happening in an animation and then link into it, then it becomes pretty apparent what's going on. Okay, so um, we have a couple questions that came in. Um, let me just go ahead and read these real quick, so I want to want to be able to answer these on the fly, and then we'll continue forward.
All right, here's a good one. So um, the question is, does Composer know if any of the child features have been changed? So that would be like in, in SOLIDWORKS, you make some changes to the model, and uh, would Composer automatically know that these are changed? So there is actually an option that you can turn on. I typically have that off by default because I like to control when it updates. But you can have Composer kind of interrogate the SOLIDWORKS model every time you open up the Composer file. So if the, model, if the SOLIDWORKS model has updated, you open up Composer and it will update automatically uh, if there is any changes. Additional to that, to update Composer, you just, it's just a file update, select the, select the SOLIDWORKS component and then it updates. Um, the preferred method that we've created as far as like a workflow that works really well if you're using ePDM uh, is that we can actually set up basically notifications that if engineering goes in, makes any changes to the, to the assembly, that can noti notify whoever's in charge of Composer to say, hey, these parts have been updated, you should probably update your Composer file. And getting that, they can say, ah, oh, those parts aren't important, I'm not going to do it, or say, okay, let's go ahead and update it before we move on. So there's a couple ways we can handle that. Um, and yeah, so. Okay, yeah, any questions you guys have, you can go ahead and ask it right in the GoToMeeting there, and I'll be sure to answer it. Okay, so jumping back in here, we've clicked on the table of content, and it plays this, this series. But now it stops, and we're stuck in the animation. So we want to just have something that triggers back to my step. Easy enough, hold down Control, take this guy, drag it in. And really, that's all you need to do. Oh, actually, there's one additional step. It is immediately after, I typically lock it down, and then I'll fade it out. Because that button doesn't need to be there after that portion of the animation. Then when you're playing the animation, it comes up, and then after you click it, it fades away. So it's a little fade out option there, which is just the opacity in the property. All right, so now if I test this, I say play animation segment, plays that animation segment, then I get a button here that I can select. That's going to bring me back to my table of content. Okay, so we're wrapping this up here, almost done. Um, there's one last thing I like to do to the, uh, to the composer file to get it ready for the player, and that's to create some navigational controls. So we have the views on the left here, which we can use to navigate, but it sure is nice to have some buttons in here. So we have this image 2D, all buttons. It's an automated placement of these buttons. Uh, they're pretty small, so I'm going to go ahead and make them a little bit bigger. Again, use that magnetic line to then attach to them kind of spread them apart, and then I can choose which steps or which, they're called views, but they're, they're, they're steps of the process, which ones actually have the buttons, and just for time's sake here, instead of, so I don't have to go and select a bunch of stuff, I'm just going to select a bunch of them here and push those buttons to those other steps, and then per step you can choose where these buttons are located, and they'll still function. So for instance, you go here, you're like, well, this is my marketing image. Maybe I just want to stick it up in the corner and not have them here at all. Uh, if I go to another one, let's go to something that's a little bit more apparent, like this guy here. I'm going to say, well, these buttons are right over my model. I'm going to go ahead and stick them up here so they're out of the way. And then when you're navigating through your final publication, which would be right here, so this is the, the end goal. This is what we've been trying to get to. And keep in mind, this is very much like the example that I closed. Let me open it back up here. It is right there. So this example here, this one's just a little cleaner. It's more two-dimensional. It has these buttons that say, hey, we're going to navigate to these different things. It's basically exactly what you have here, buttons that navigate to different things. And you can just choose what that navigates to. And uh, I have buttons here that are going to take me through the steps of the process. Like here, I'd want to kind of forgot to edit that one because I have my build materials that go over it. So let me, let me do that real quick. Grab these buttons and we'll move them like here. That's a good place. All right, one step back here and we'll try that again. So hit next. Now it gets me to the next step. The buttons switch over out of, out of way of the build materials and I can select them as well. Move back. And so you can see per view, per step, we can actually control where these are. Like in this step, I probably wouldn't want them there. But it's just easy enough to put them in one view, push them to the rest, and then go to those views independently and just adjust them. So you don't have to apply them in every single step kind of thing. 
Okay, so that sums up uh, what we had for you guys today. And uh, if I go to my very last slide here, I think we have some questions too that I'll answer here in just one minute. But uh, but yeah, so um, so that, that wraps up for Composer, and that's just our, you know, um, basically all the different publications into one nice package. And uh, next week we're going to go, so it's going to be the 29th, we'll do inspection and model-based definitions, and then on the 5th we'll do visualize. And so just want to make sure that I don't have any questions left out here. Um, Okay, uh, question was, how do you set up the setting for that update? Here, I'll show you here. So, if I go to, back into Composer, which is right here. It is, just bear with me, because I haven't messed with the setting in a little while, just want to make sure that I can find it here. So there's the update, we also have that right there. So it's under application preference input check file changes. If that's selected, then it's going to integrate the, the SOLIDWORKS files and update as soon as you open. So, you know, as, as a typical workflow, I, I suggest to my customers not to use that. That way you can open up Composer and choose when to update. But if you want to do it automatically, uh, it's right there. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's what we had today. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this open. Uh, for a few more minutes just in case any other questions come in and then I'll go ahead and shut it down in about three or four minutes if nothing else happens. Other than that, you guys have a great weekend. Hope to see you here next Friday and the Friday after that and uh, thanks for attending.